Uh, good evening and thank you for spending a little time with us on a pretty warm, albeit pretty nice, Wednesday. As far as your weather is concerned, we've still got a warm and dry run into September continuing. Clouds and some rain chances for your weekend. Some rain chances, not a whole lot adding up, I don't think. And then some warm, dry conditions thereafter will continue throughout up until at least the middle of the ninth month. We'll talk about that in more detail in just a few moments. Headlines tonight will include coverage of the Paintsville City Council meeting. We'll find out what's happening over in Johnson County in the Paintsville City limits in regards to setting tax rates, their health insurance, who's going to be paying a 4% increase uh, in premiums for Paintsville City employees, also a mobile home ordinance, as well as another lengthy discussion about sewer rates. They're going to have to increase, but they've been wrestling with the situation for months now on how to pay for millions of dollars in improvements to the sewer system. We'll cover all of that in just a few moments. The Johnson County Board of Education, which is to meet in just a day or two, and uh, maybe even another meeting set for next week, uh, is taking their case all the way to the Kentucky Supreme Court as it pertains to taxes and some other tax-related issues as it's that tax-setting time of the year. And a meeting that has been slated for anyone interested in finding out more about the restaurant row portion of the, the Mountain Parkway expansion project. We'll get to all of that tonight beginning with Paintsville City Council coverage where indeed they did speak very very briefly about setting tax rates. They spoke more at length about health insurance and certainly sewer rates. Rates going up in both of those areas. We'll hear more with tonight's coverage. The council approved minutes from the prior meeting in the departmental reports. It was noted that there was some improvement in expense reports for the Paintsville Ambulance Service and the overall budget had shown improvements for the last couple of months at least. Unanimous approval of the bills was also given. The mayor then noted that any extra garbage pickup besides normal household garbage might be subject to additional rates. He noted the city has been made aware of the fact that some individuals had at some times been placing a lot of garbage or debris out by the curb, possibly in front of even another residence that they didn't own, so that the city would pick it up and then it was starting to add up financially for the city. He said that if anyone needs special garbage collection within the city limits of Paintsville, please call City Hall. He recognized the recent ribbon cutting ceremony at the Combs Airport boat ramp. It's now open and being used and just in time for the next Paddle Fest event coming up next Saturday the 24th. And Mayor Porter also noted that he had just signed the contracts for the sidewalk construction project, which has been in the works for literally years. They are starting this week on 3rd, Elm, Church, and West Streets where old sidewalks will be torn up and new ones will be constructed. And from there, they revisited, with a second reading, the mobile home ordinance for the city of Paintsville. Amendment to the, or to the mobile, what we'll call the mobile home ordinance, which uh, will uh, <coughs> prohibit, once again, mobile homes from uh, being set up outside of mobile home parks in the city of Paintsville. Section 152.01, it shall be unlawful to place or locate within the city any mobile homes or house trailer or any structure transported on its own wheels for commercial or residential use. There was a unanimous roll call vote in support of that ordinance, which will now go into effect. They amended the ordinance after a double wide structure was recently brought into the city of Paintsville. The city has asked that the utilities not connect service to that structure until the city grants them a certificate of habitation. The mayor then brought up the first reading of the sewer rate ordinance. They are still trying after about three or four months now to come to terms with raising sewer rates in order to pay for renovations and upgrades to get the sewer system in state compliance before the water commission is fined up to $25,000 a day. The city and water commissioners have been back and forth now for months. Initially, after an $8.29 flat fee, an increase of that amount for all customers was touted. Later, a $4 increase for most all of the customers was touted, alongside an increased plan for the largest of users. Any additional discussion on that or thoughts at this time? How close are we to where they're going to be fined? Bob stood up, so I'm going to let him speak to that. <laughs> But there, there's no answer in terms of, of when they would actually start finding us. I uh, have found out a little bit on the, on the funding, including the $2.1 million grant. Uh, at five years from the time of commitment of those funds to complete the project, 
We're about two and a half years into that, and it's projected to be about an 18 month project once it gets actually started. There's not a whole lot of time left within that funding package. So we don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Do you care to explain again the, the increase in how it is? Like, talk to me like a six year old who just explain exactly. The, the, the latest proposal that we came up with was for a $4 increase on minimum rate of 2,000 gallons a month. All right, now the, the, let's stop right there. Sure. Uh, how many? So how many residents actually use only 2,000 a month? You said the average was between two and three thousand, didn't it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's in the packet here. Yeah. It shows uh, so I mean just up to two thousand residentials, five hundred and eighty five customers. Out of yeah. out of two thousand customers. Yeah, it actually you're looking at six hundred and sixty four if it's the That's all the buildings there. It's thirty four percent of your customers are for two thousand gallons and below. On, on average. And how many percent uses 3,000? When you get to 3,000, you're up to 53%. Okay. And 4,000? 69%. Paintsville Utilities Manager Bob Pack also noted that if they increase that threshold up to 5,000 gallons, that would include about 80% of the Paintsville City Sewer Systems users. Following which, Councilman Bill Mike Runyon asked that Pack come back before the City Council during their next meeting with numbers breaking down and itemizing at 4,000 gallons and at 5,000 gallons what the percentage of increase would be for those customers over that threshold and the money that would be generated for the Paintsville Utilities. It's all part of paying back a $4.9 million loan that will go alongside a $2.1 million grant to pay for renovations to the sewer system. Going on to other financial matters, specifically talking about setting the property tax rate for the city of Paintsville, it only took a minute, possibly even less, for a motion to be made to keep the city's tax rate as it was the previous year, followed by a unanimous vote, keeping the tax rate at .187 per $100 of valuation. Next, it was health insurance. The health insurance plan up due, that is, on October the 1st for city employees with some good news for those same employees who will not be paying themselves the 4% increase for their same health care coverage that they've had in the prior year. We've, uh, we've had the, uh, uh, our agents uh, working on this, and I've been working with them, and uh, Anthem first came back with a 13% increase, uh, the agent got them down to 9%, and we, we badgered them until they finally got it down to 4%. So, so the proposal is a 4% increase to keep the same coverage. The alternative is to keep the same premiums we have now, we would have to go from an 80-20 program uh, to a 70-30 program and increase the out-of-pocket expenses for our uh, employees. And, and I'd like to recommend that, I don't know if y'all have had a chance to look at the last page in your packet, uh, I'd like to recommend that we do have enough money in our contingency reserve and so forth to absorb the additional uh, 24,000, I think it is, that right then. Yeah. 20, okay, 20,000 and uh, and provide the same coverage this coming year for our I agree with that. Is so, that the form of a motion? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to ask one question. Who's the agent? Who is the agent on this? Benefit marketing, I'd like to know. There was a unanimous vote to accept that 4% increase with the city picking up the tab for its employees. There were bids to be opened thereafter, three that were submitted for a new fire truck, a new pumper unit for the Paintsville Fire Department, bids ranging from $317,000 to $360,000 from three separate companies. It was immediately asked upon Big Sandy Ad, specifically Regina McClure, and the fire chief of Paintsville to review those bids. Therefore, the motion was tabled to accept the low or best bid on a new fire engine. They'll revisit that next meeting. 
Next was opening bids on an emergency outdoor warning siren for Painesville. They received two bids, both right around $24,000. That, too, tabled for a review by Emergency Management Director Gary McClure and the Big Sandy ad. One of the last items of business was going into executive session. They said to discuss the acquisition of real estate. And the mayor invited to go along with him into executive session future council members Justin Lewandowski and Patricia Nelson. As you may recall, as I reported several weeks ago, there will be no election needed for the next Paintsville City Council as there were only six people to file for the six available seats, so the mayor and the council thought it appropriate to include them on current city business. They came back out of executive session saying that no action had been taken and the meeting was adjourned. On a related note, the federal trial against Mayor Bob Porter of Paintsville is still set to begin actually one week from today, next Wednesday at 9.30 at the federal courthouse in London. Recent developments per public record on his case indicate that the United States took a video recorded deposition of former city employee Laura Jackie Miller at the Johnson County Courthouse on the sixth day of this month for the purpose of preserving her testimony for that trial. As for his co-defendant, Euless Crace, no updates there. As I informed you last, he was released from the Federal Medical Center in Lexington following his completion of a mental health evaluation on the 22nd day of August. I'll be right back. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Before I get to your community calendar tonight, and yes, the community calendar is back up and running this evening. What I thought was human error on Monday turned out not to be yesterday. I'm glad to report that it wasn't my fault for change, and we'll have those announcements for you and more headlines following that. Right now, though, our next headline centers around a public meeting. You are invited if you are interested to learn more about the Mountain Parkway construction, specifically that going on, that will be going on and continuing to go on for years in the restaurant row area. I learned earlier this morning that the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet is going to hold a meeting later this month to share and provide information about all the construction ongoings and activities starting in Sagersville as this part of the Mountain Parkway expansion project really starts to pick up some steam. The meeting, they say, is going to serve as a preview of the three-year construction project that will improve safety and mobility along Sagersville's Restaurant Row. The project runs along a nearly two-and-a-half-mile corridor, of course, just east from the end of the Mountain Parkway to just east of Kentucky 114 and 460, where they intersect. Over the next three years, the main roadway is going to be widened, we know, to four lanes and converted to a partially controlled parkway that will improve the flow of traffic through the restaurant row area. No surprise there, nothing new that we already don't already know. They say it, of course, will ensure access to businesses, residences, and other facilities. The project also includes improving and expanding a system of local access roads along what will become an extension of the Mountain Parkway. A lot of folks have got a lot of great interest in that, and you'll be able to find out hopefully everything that you have any need or want to know at this meeting. And it's going to be held at the New Magoffa County High School. It will be from 5 to 7 o'clock. On Tuesday the 27th, not this coming Tuesday, but the following. So 5 o'clock Tuesday the 27th. Now we're still several days away. I am just as soon as I finish this report, going to put that on the calendar and the community calendar. And I'll remind you in the days before. September the 27th, 5 o'clock at the McGoffin County High School. And of course, if you can't be there, you can expect the report following here on Your News Today. Let me pause for one quick commercial, then our calendar will pick it up next. Stay tuned. I got a couple of birthdays. I mentioned them yesterday, but now that we have the calendar back up and running, I want to mention them again. First off, a belated birthday, of course, now to Judy Wheeler with a lot of love from Wendy and Ty and Aiden Elijah. Happy, happy birthday. And we also had a birthday for yesterday that I couldn't post on the gr graphics, at least. And that went out to Yvonne Arnett, love daughters Frankie uh, and Polly and sons Jackie and Jesse. Happy, happy birthday, Yvonne. Just now realized the calendar being off, it's about time to pull down the old blackboard background that I've had up since the start of school and put some pretty fall colors on there, which we're starting to see 
peep out ever so slowly. It'll happen really quickly, though, in the days to come. Nevertheless, revival is starting at the Royalton Church with Brother Justin Williams and special singing nightly Thursday night at 7 and nightly at 7 all the way through Sunday night, Sunday night at 6. And I've misspelled Sunday. My goodness, my apologies. Pastors Delbert Porter and Andrew Oliver invite you to come worship with them and rejoice in the Lord. Revival starting Thursday through Sunday at the Royalton Church. And the McGuffin County Civil War Committee, with the assistance, of course, of the Kentucky Humanities Council, let me back that up, has scheduled another Chautauqua series here in McGuffin County. It's this Saturday at 7. I've got a great deal. I've got a bio on Aunt Molly Jackson, and you've got to hear it, but let me just say she was a pistol-packing woman. We'll suffice for that for now. But nevertheless, this Chautauqua, uh, as performed by Ann Shelby, will be 7 o'clock this Saturday, and it's free. It's free at the Magoffa County Health Department, once again provided by the Magoffa County, or sponsored in part by the Magoffa County Civil War Reenactment Committee. And you'll start to see a few colors if you take a ride with them. Their fall fellowship ride with the Kearney Free Will Baptist Church is set for Saturday the 24th. Sign in registration that morning at 9 at South Magoffin Elementary, $20 per ATV. Kids 12 and under ride free, snacks and a lunch provided and on the trail. A picnic lunch provided at Elk View at the picnic shelter there. It's about a four-and-a-half-hour ride. Bring a camera, dress for the weather, who knows what it'll be. And if you have any questions in the meantime, call 349-1515 or 349-4343. And for birthdays, anniversaries, and calendar announcements, call me. Or get them to me any way you can. We'll tell everyone about them. I also want to make note with the problems that I've had here for the past several days with the community calendar that has also rippled, had a ripple effect onto our posting the program on the website and on our YouTube channel. So now that that is resolved, they're both resolved, and we'll have our regular programming back up on yournewstoday.com and our YouTube channel, well, hopefully starting tonight. Brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home Funeral Service Announcements. The first tonight in honor of 49-year-old Becky Howard of Johnson Fork passed away on yesterday the daughter of the late Wishard and Eula Howard surviving as a sister Jeannie Howard and two brothers Douglas and Dwayne. Visitation is going to start after six o'clock tomorrow and then prior to services that are going to begin Friday morning at 11 in her honor all from the Sagersville funeral home. Burial will be at the Howard Family Cemetery on Johnson Fork. Once again 49 year old Rebecca Becky Howard. And a reminder about services to be held for 74-year-old Jack, Stan Jack Standifer of Happy, Kentucky. He passed away Friday. He survived by his son, Scott, and daughters, Sherry Miller and Mary Standifer. A graveside memorial service in his honor is going to be held in Indiana Friday at 1. Locally, the Sagersville Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. It indeed is tax setting time across Kentucky. Local governments and taxing districts for the most part faced with having to possibly raise taxes to make the same money or income that they generated the year before. Not all are doing so. In Johnson County, specifically for the Johnson County Board of Education, they and a committee are still fighting over a tax rate proposal back in 2014 as the Board of Education looks to set tax rates for 2016-17 in just a few days. In its efforts to increase tax revenues for 2014, the Johnson County School Board has now taken its case before the Kentucky Supreme Court, which has agreed to a discretionary review of the case. It goes back to 2014. The board had voted to increase the school tax, a decision that was met with dissension from within the community after a committee was formed and spearheaded a protest and collected a required number of signatures to get the issue brought up on a special vote. When the Johnson County clerk declared the signatures to be legitimate, the school board quickly moved to file an appeal with the Kentucky State Court of Appeals. At the appeals level, it was decided that the petition was indeed valid. With this new ruling, the Johnson County Board has now taken their case, however, to the Kentucky State Supreme Court, requesting that discretionary review once again, which has been granted, even as this suit plays out in the Kentucky Supreme Court, which, of course, will be months at the very least. The board has set a public meeting for September the 26th at 5 o'clock, where they will discuss a 4% increase in the 2016 school board tax, which is, of course, allowed per annum by the state.
In this suit, the Supreme Court will either agree to hear the case or deny to hear it, which would allow the Court of Appeals ruling to stand. Court records indicate that in September of 2014, the compensating rate was 38.1 cents per $100 of valuation. The board voted to have a 45.3% tax rate set thereafter. A committee was formed soon thereafter, and they filed suit, and they and the Johnson County Board of Education are still fighting it out in court with the Supreme Court, now the next step in this battle. And, of course, all this has its time yet again to set tax rates for the Johnson County School District in days. And in a related topic, the Paintsville Independent School Board voted earlier this week. They did so unanimously on setting their property tax rate. They kept it as was last year, choosing not to take a compensating rate or an up to 4% increase, leaving it, however, at 93.1 cents, 93.1 cents for every $100 of assessed value, meaning roughly a $100,000 home or assessed piece of property would have a tax bill of $931 a year for the school tax. That's for Paintsville Independent. Here's your weather forecast. Glad to have it tonight and back up and running. Brought to you by Licking Valley RECC. No major changes to your forecast or the weather pattern. We're going to continue with a warm and dry run into September, at least midway through the ninth month. Uh, some clouds, some rain possible for the weekend. Here's how it plays out. We're still in the upper eight. Well, yep, still in the upper 80s here at the 6 o'clock hour. Tonight, 64, partly cloudy, a calming wind. Tomorrow for your Thursday, 84 and 63, mostly sunny, partly cloudy. Late tomorrow night, dry and warm backing off just a bit but nevertheless we'll pick it back up on your friday with mostly sunny skies temperatures near 90 and 66 for nighttime lows a few clouds will start to move in friday they're not going to make any moisture or rain but by saturday this front will give us at least a chance thereof and right now to the tune of about 30 percent increasing to 40 percent by the evening that is of showers and thunderstorms uh, mainly not even working their way into about after three o'clock in the afternoon otherwise partly sunny mid 80s and once again that 30 to 40 percent chance of showers saturday those chances increase into your sunday and you'll notice they do so with temperatures taking a bit of a dive 81 and 60 on the latter half of your weekend still a good chance of some showers and thunderstorms factoring in at about 50 percent don't see any real heavy rain makers in this but some showers and really you know could use a little rain starting to dry up pretty much in a lot of spots across the viewing area in eastern Kentucky starting off next week we should dry up I think that 20 percent chance of showers there at the bottom right of your screen that's like before 10 o'clock Monday morning otherwise 80 and 57 and a pretty nice start to the work week if there is such a thing <laughs> we'll see Tuesday and Wednesday follow suit with more sunshine with temperatures climbing back up to the mid, maybe even upper 80s as soon as midweek. It's going to wrap it up for this Wednesday. I have a full day of news that will start for myself bright and early in the morning. We'll have that and some other reports that we hope to see when we see you back here next time. For now, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and have a good night.